Hey guys, Ben here. Welcome to your next quick little C++ tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing you uh, something really cool called header initialization, which is new in C++11. Uh, of course, we can't really call that new anymore, but it's something I haven't taught you yet. Uh, and there's also one thing I need to correct uh, with my naming convention uh, that I've been doing wrong pretty much this whole time uh, that I wasn't aware of that I want to make sure you guys are aware of. Uh, so first, let's start with header initialization. This is something that is uh, uh, new in C++11. Uh, and basically, it's a new way to initialize your variables that is far superior than uh, using an initialization list like this. Now, sometimes you may need to use an initialization list uh, for some reason, uh, but typically uh, you can replace the usage of the initialization lists for most of your variables uh, by using header initialization instead. Uh, so what's the problem with using the initialization list? Well, the problem is the initialization of the variables is separate from the actual uh, declaration of the variables. So for instance, this screen within screen height, when we go look at these variables right here, if we just look in the header, we can't really tell if these are going to be initialized to something correctly. What we have to do is open our CPP file, go to our constructor, and make sure that there's values here. Uh, if we had forgotten to put values here, then you can end up with a really nasty bug with uninitialized variables uh, and things like that. It really sucks. So uh, the better thing to do is instead of declaring them all here, which you can still do, uh, what we'll do is just go into the header file and uh, set up their initial values here. So we would say screen width equals 1024, screen height equals 768. And that's that's all there is to it. So this will be pretty much the same thing uh, as an initialization list. It'll do the it'll do the same thing, uh, except um, it's going to be initialized here in the header, uh, so that when you come look at these variables, you know right away that these are going to have some default values that are good. Uh, and of course, you can still. Uh, leave them in the initialization list. What's going to happen is first the header initialization is going to happen and then the initialization list uh, will happen and take over. Uh, so if sometimes order matters with initialization, for instance, say you need something to be initialized before something else, uh, you can take care of that with an initialization list, uh, or if you just make sure the order is correct in your header file, it should be fine. Uh, otherwise, uh, just always use header initialization. It's much better, and it's something I'm going to be doing from now on. Uh, it's, just, it's just less bug prone. Uh, and now the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was my naming convention for private variables. So what I've been doing is using this underscore uh, in front of any private member variables. And that's a neat convention for most languages, but it's actually not a good convention for C++ because uh, variables with an underscore in front of them are actually reserved by the compiler. These are, these are name, this is a naming convention that the compiler uses. Uh, so it's probably not going to cause any issues. I can't imagine the compiler is going to be needing the player variable, for instance. But it's just bad programming practice because it could theoretically use these variable names. Uh, so a better thing to do is to rename them uh, with an M in front. This is another very common naming convention uh, that works well for C++. So now instead of underscore player, it's M underscore player. And the M stands for member. So I'm going to be renaming pretty much all of my variables with this. I'm not going to do it all in this video. Uh, but I recommend that you do the same or and you start following this either n this naming convention or another naming convention. Uh, it doesn't matter really what naming convention you follow. You don't have to do what I do as long as you're consistent. Uh, and if you're ever working on a project with other people, just make sure all of you are consistent together. Really, the most important naming convention to use is the one that the project you're working on is using. And likely, uh, when you move to lots of different projects, everybody's going to be using or all the different projects are going to have different naming conventions that you have to uh, stick to. Uh, so it doesn't, there is really no superior naming convention. I just personally prefer to distinguish private member variables with something, uh, for instance, m underscore, uh, just because it gives them a, a uniqueness when you're looking uh, through the code. You can immediately tell, well, this is a private member variable. This isn't a local variable. This isn't a global variable. Uh, you know, it just, it just makes it distinguished. Uh, thanks for watching this short little tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to be doing audio.